Today I'm going to show you how to use the PicoScope software and to take basic measurements inside the software. Those measurements might include things such as frequency, duty cycle, pulse width, RPM, uh, minimum and maximum voltages, etc. And we can do that a couple of ways. First, we can use our rulers. We have several different rulers inside the program that can help us do this. And then second, we have the measurements option where we can add a measurement. And so what we have here is a waveform that was captured of the camshaft and the crankshaft position sensors of an engine that was running. And we can see that uh, they're labeled down here. Channel A is not used. The B, that's the blue channel here. Channel B is the camshaft position sensor. It's a Hall effect or digital sensor here. And channel C, the green one, is the crankshaft position sensor or the CKP sensor. So first thing is let's show you how to measure frequency. We'll take this crankshaft position sensor because it appears to be happening at a fixed frequency. The definition of frequency is the number of pulses or occurrences per second. And to do that, we'll use these little white rulers that come out here and measure on the horizontal axis. So we'll come out and we'll mark off a certain spot here in this waveform. I'm marking where the voltage is rising. And one cycle is where the voltage rises, turns off again, and rises again. We look for that complete cycle, so I'll mark off that cycle. And it's pretty easy because now over here in the lower right-hand corner, we should see our frequency measurement. Frequency, of course, is measured in hertz, which is cycles per second. And it shows us that with this amount of time between cycles, we're at 577.6 hertz. Now, I can zoom in more and become a little bit more accurate maybe on my, on my placement of my rulers. But it's going to give us pretty close to that measurement right there. So that's the first step. Another thing that we can do with these rulers is to measure pulse width. Let's take the same waveform from the crankshaft position sensor and measure the pulse width. Pulse width is measured in time, and it's usually the on pulse, or the high pulse, or the low pulse. In this case, we have a high and a low pulse during each cycle here. But typically, we want to measure the high pulse, or the time that it was on. So I would come over here and measure like this. It turned on here, turned off here. And we're going to measure that in time. We come up here to the top, and in this case, it's 1.091 milliseconds. That's the measurement of pulse width. Um, another thing that we can do here is we can measure duty cycle. And there are several ways to do this, but one of the easiest, I think, is I'll hit this X to close and put these two rulers away. Duty cycle is a measurement of the percentage of on time during a cycle. So we already said that this is one cycle from here to here. And during that time, we want to know what percentage of the time it was on. So I'll use these rulers. I come over here to the little blue dots in the lower right corner and mark this off and this. So I'll mark off one cycle. And you can see by default it says that that's 720 degrees. I can change this by coming down here to the rulers tab and marking this in percent. So now it says 0 and 200%, meaning two cycles. I want to change that to 100%, representing one cycle here. Now that I've got a cycle marked off, I can grab my white rulers over here again and put one of them right here when this turns off. And I can look up here and see what percentage this falls at. And see if I move this, that percentage changes. And so right there, out of 100% of a cycle, it was on for approximately 63% of the time. So that's a 63% duty cycle. Okay, now something else that I can do is I can measure RPM. In this case, if we want to measure engine RPM, we want to go off the RPM of the crankshaft, of course. That's how engine RPM is measured. But as we look at this crankshaft position sensor, there are no identifying signatures in this waveform that tell us where one revolution occurs. However, if we look at the camshaft sensor, there is a repeating pattern. You'll notice that if we look at the low pulses, I think that visually it's easier to see the low pulses here. We have a narrow pulse, a little bit wider pulse, and an even wider pulse, and then it repeats. And each time that repeats, that's one revolution of the camshaft. Now you have to remember, though, that one revolution of the camshaft is not one revolution of the crankshaft. So what we would do is use these white rulers and come out and set these rulers up 
to mark off one revolution of the camshaft come down here and it shows us that that is 1947 RPM or revolutions per minute. You'll notice that RPM or revolutions per minute and Hertz or cycles per second are closely related. They're about the same thing. One is just in seconds and one is in minutes. Otherwise, they're, they're basically the same thing. Now, I will leave this to you. I won't show you exactly how to do this, but if you wanted to find out what the RPM of the engine is in this instance, you would need to move this to mark off one revolution of the crankshaft. So you just need to think about what the relationship between the speed of the crankshaft and the speed of the camshaft are to mark this off or put this at the appropriate place to measure that RPM. One more thing that I want to show you about these rulers are these vertical rulers. You'll notice that for each channel there's a little square up here at the top. There's a red one here, a green one, and a blue one. So if I want to measure the voltages on the green channel, for example, I would bring this down. I could mark that off. So there's my high and there's my low voltage. It shows both of these up here, the high and the low voltages, and then it shows the difference or the delta right here. It's about a five volt difference from top to bottom of that waveform or that, that digital signal. And I could do the same thing with the red channel. it would provide me as well in the red channel a delta or a difference. And I might need to zoom in to become more accurate in my placement of the rulers, but that's how you do that. Okay, now finally I want to show one more thing. We have the ability to measure all of these things maybe more accurately than we do with the rulers because the rulers are only accurate as closely as I can place these rulers onto the waveform. I can be a little bit inaccurate in my placement. But the, the scope itself has a measurement tool. So if I come down here and click add a measurement, I have the option now to choose a channel and add a measurement. So let's just start adding measurements. Let's add the measurement of frequency to this green channel, to channel C. So I choose channel C and I come down here and choose from all my measurements frequency. I can mark off the entire trace or I can say between rulers. In this case, I'm going to say between rulers. And I'm going to place my rulers out here just to capture a, a portion of this waveform. Then I would look down here and I see that my frequency is at 580 hertz. You might notice on your scope that your font is a lot smaller. I made mine bigger so that it's easier to see, but you can do that right up here under the measurements tab. Again, where you can add or edit measurements but you have a font size option right here. I made mine large just because I like to be able to read that easily. So there's the, the frequency. Let's add another measurement. Let's measure the pulse width. So I want to measure the high pulse. And again, I'll do that between the rulers. And there it is. Now these numbers should be very close to the numbers that we were measuring earlier with our rulers. It's a good way to check to see if you were doing it correctly. I could add another measurement for duty cycle. If you notice, they're all options in here. There's my duty cycle. Anyway, that's a quick tutorial on how to take measurements within the PicoScope software. You can use these rulers for a lot of different things and also the measurement tool is very handy. You'll notice that there are a lot of other options in here. You'll see that we have many other things. Minimum and maximum measurements are often very useful in a waveform along with several of these that we can use depending on what we're after when we're looking at our waveforms.